oh, you like the gold fever. You know, it's yeah. definitely true. You get a little bit of gold and you just go like, <laughs> oh, it might be worth, you know, a cent. But, uh, <laughs> for the little bit, but yeah, you're like, you see a little sparkle in it. Yeah, it pumps you up and it keeps you going. And, and not only that, but I hadn't really spent much time with my father-in-law. Like they had been over to London to visit us um, to kind of the summer before for a couple of weeks. But yeah, so I th- it was just good kind of bonding time as well. Yeah. Um, and I knew that this area was a huge um, was huge in like gold back in like the, the 1800s during the gold rush and stuff. And so I, so I had to set in my mind that I was gonna, that I was gonna go gold panning and, and find enough to, to make my wedding ring. And I was killed by, um, Sir Anthony Hopkins. So I got, wow. was on a, that was on like a military transport plane. He was a prisoner and he breaks out and he like spills this little capsule of poison in it. Yeah, you're all, you're all the guys <laughs> joking to death and fought, they give you this stuff, makes your mouth foam all up. So you're wow. up with foam. And yeah, no, he was, he was an awesome guy too. Cause all these big, like Matt Damon and Anthony Hopkins were two of the biggest, like biggest stars like out there. And the two of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Wow. You know, like it was tough really. Um, so I was, yeah, I was teaching full time and um, yeah, with the kids, basically I would work on things when they went to bed. So instead of sitting and watching TV, I'd go out to my workshop and, and work for, you know, a few hours a night. And then Saturdays was basically like another work day. And then he came over and picked up Grace and Paul and went down to the meetings, which is where the, the closest, you know, big hospital is about three hours away. And um, yeah, they were there all night into the morning, um, got into an MRI kind of four, three, four o'clock the next afternoon. And then Paula called um, called me, and I was back at home, you know, with the kids all day, just waiting. And um, yeah, called me about seven o'clock that night and said, you know, Grace has a brain tumor. And I remember yeah, it was just like an out of body of experience. It was just yeah. Jesus. I, yeah, I remember. It was in my, I, was in, I remember exactly what happened. I remember what I did. I was in the bedroom, and I just kind of was just like shouting, "No!" You know, or just, you know, just, I think that's just the first thing that came out. And, you know, like Paula was awesome on the phone. Like she wasn't crying or anything um, then. And uh, yeah, and I was just in, in full shock. And basically, yeah, she put me on the phone with the doctor and yeah, the prognosis wasn't good at all. And yeah, he was like, I think you need to get down here right away. So the next morning.